All right, so that is uh, my tricopter. That is uh, the designed um, mainly by um, David Vinstall on the RC Explorer SE. Um, I made the the wood board um, pretty custom. Um, it's kind of based off his uh, coffin body concept. I didn't want to do all the uh, the uh, the detail in, in cutting out the the shape that he has on some of his tricopters. Um, I'm using DT750 servos. Let me see if I can get some light real quick. So I'm using uh, DT750 servos from Hobby King, uh, Turnergy Plush. Um, these are 30 amp ESCs. See those there? So 30 amp. Um, I'm running the uh, KK2 board, uh, version uh, 1.5. Uh, I'm using the uh, um, DSM2 um, 2.4 gigahertz um, transmission. Um, let's see what else. Uh, that's just a standard analog servo that I had laying around. Um, the the rudder or the the yaw mechanism um, is actually a helicopter um, blade grip, and uh, I have the the shaft that is. Uh, embedded inside the uh, the wood um, post there, the leg, the wood leg. I drilled out a little hole and then it's just uh, held in there with friction and it's a, a very slop free um, um, joint here. So it seems to work really well. Um, everything is just zip tied on. You can see under there it's just a couple zip ties. Um, the legs are just something I had to whip up just to get some legs on here. I didn't really have anything else laying around, so I cut some um, some of these uh, uh, quad or tricopter arms, and uh, I didn't cut them off the model. Obviously, I had extra laying around, and uh, I hot glued them to the side, and then I zip tied in a cross fashion um, to hold it, and they are very sturdy. Um, I did come down rough once outside, and uh, it just broke the hot glue away. And uh, so I, you can just um, re-glue them back on, and you're good to go. Um, let's see. The props I'm spinning right now are 10 by 4.5. And uh, whenever you buy these motors, you're going to need um, some little uh, 4 or M4 nuts, there's 4 millimeter nuts. Uh, these are nylocks, so they won't uh, undo themselves under vibration. Um, let's see here. That's pretty much all of that. Right now I'm running a, uh, a 3S Turnigy uh, 2200. It's just Velcroed to the, the bottom plate here. And then uh, all the ESCs are joined in, into that one Dean's plug. And then uh, it's all fed from the battery. And uh, that Velcro has never given me an issue. It's always been fine. Um, so let me collapse the legs here. And we'll go over the, the actual settings of, on the board. Um, also... Before we do this, the uh, the board actually has a feature where you can uh, you can use the the beeper to uh, sound whenever the voltage is running low on your battery. Uh, I do not have that rigged up yet, um, so I'm using um, this external uh, voltage monitor uh, for three S's. It just sends off a beep, so it protects your lipo from uh, discharging too much. And all right, so let's go into uh, the settings of this KK2 board version 1.5. So you go into the PI editor first. Uh, my rolls are set up as so. My pitch is going to be the same as my roll. 
then my yaw right now 45 20 50 10 okay so that's all the settings on the the PI editor uh, don't need to go on the receiver test uh, mode settings self level I have right now under auxiliary it's, it's gonna be uh, so for me it's the fifth channel on here and it's gonna be the fifth um, um, port on the the left side of your board here okay um, roll it's linked yes that's why the the roll and uh, the pitch uh, values were the same in the PI editors because it is linked. Um, all right. Stick scaling uh, 30, 30, 50, 100. Miscellaneous. I have minimum throttle maxed out at 20. Uh, that's just what I personally needed to get all my motors spinning up at the same time. And then uh, servo filter, uh, I have it set at 30. I've seen others have it at like 50 and such. It, it basically depends on your servo. If your ser servo is jittering, um, then you can increase the, the servo filter amount, and that should uh, take out that jitter. Okay. Self-level settings. So P gain 70, P limit 60. Um, haven't really messed around with these at all. Uh, the trim and the roll and pitch. So if you, as I understand it, if I take my hands off the transmitter and it starts veering one way or another, I can actually increase these trims so it will actually uh, um, hold itself. Not using a camera. Uh, sensor test. So you can test. I can move the board around and those numbers are changing, so that's good. Uh, calibration, you're going to want to do this when you get your board set on a level surface and then go through the, the process. Basically, you just press enter a couple times and it's good. Just make sure your board's level. Um, see PPM settings. Um, that's basically, um, let's see, one, yep, yeah, so... These settings right here are what this is saying is what is labeling on these ports out here. So your first um, jumper, your mail-to-mail -mail jumper on the left side, this is going to go into your into your uh, receiver. And so this first port is your roll or your your aileron. So you're going to plug that into your aileron port in your receiver. The second is your um, pitch or elevator, third is your throttle, fourth is your rudder, and then fifth is the auxiliary. All right, so that's how you know what to plug in your mail to mail jumper cables to. Um, while we're here, I'll go ahead and tell you which ones. Actually, no, never mind, it'll be explained next. Um, we can go through the mixer editor here. A lot of these are stock, actually. Um, so there's channel one, channel two, channel three, channel four. Now this is channel four is pretty much the only one I've modified. Um, my rudder was at positive 100, but it was uh, deflecting the wrong way, so I changed it to negative 100. And then the offset, without the offset, my servo was tilted a whole bunch to one side. So I added an offset so it would uh, remain um, pretty much level when it was just powered on. Um, otherwise, it was all, all messed up. So the offset just corrected it so it was centered. Um, and then as far as this whole... Uh, rudder being positive or negative and how you know. Um, let me unfold these arms again here. Okay, so imagine your, your tricopter is flying and you um, 
turn it this way, all right? Um, or if your tricopter is turning this way, you want it to correct itself. Make sense? So uh, if your tricopter yaws to the left, you want your rudder to also point left. Well, let me move my transmitter sticks for a second. There we go. All right, so yeah. If, you're, if your tricopter is yawing left, you want this to bank left like that. If your tricopter is yawing to the right, you want this to bank to the right in order to counter that. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, if not, that's just how it is supposed to work, so make sure it's set up that way. And okay back here. Alright, so this is the, the motor layout. Alright, so right now I do have the correct props on here for this actual layout. So um, the front left is a uh, clockwise prop as well as the, uh, the number three motor, your tail motor, is also a clockwise prop. The uh, number two or the top right motor um, has a counterclockwise prop on it. Okay, and it kind of breaks it down to you. So counterclockwise, clockwise, and number four is the turbo. So let me actually go back into this again. So these numbers also signify um, which port these are going to go into on the right side of the board. So you have eight ports, we're only using the first four um, because we have three motors and one servo. So um, the top left motor on your tricopter, so this one up here, that uses uh, servo port one. Um, the top right motor, this guy, uses uh, servo port two. Um, and the third motor uses the third servo port, and then I'm saying servo port. I mean just the 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 port on the board, the third third one down, and then uh, the fourth port is used for the servo, the tail servo, the yaw. Okay. Um, make sure you actually load the tricopter motor layout. Um, when you, that's probably the very first thing you're ever going to have to do. So make sure you go down to load motor layout and pick tricopter. Uh, debug and factory reset. Okay, so that's all there is to this. Um, that's how this is all set up. And, uh, okay, cool. So pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can go on to rcexplorer.se. He's got an awesome build log. He's actually built a, uh, quite a few different versions of tricopters. Um, so this one was the one with wood and I liked that the most because it was the cheapest and pretty easy to build and I already had some wood laying around. Um, all up costs is uh, it just breaks a hundred dollars um, for the motors and speed controllers and the the KKD board. Um, that's assuming you know you have a battery and a uh, transmitter and receiver but um, so it's about $100 to get it up and flying if you have the, the basics, if you're making it like a kit. And then um, I'll go over the, the Turnigy 9XR settings. So I have this labeled tricopter here. Try to zoom in here. Okay, so you don't have to worry about most of these guys. It's kind of dark, isn't it? Um, okay, so the mixer is the only thing you're actually going to have to come in here and change. If there's something mixed on channel 6, go ahead and delete it. Um, the only thing you have to mess with is channel 5. Um, so you're going to take your source and that's going to be channel 5 um, weight is 100 so offset actually isn't even true uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. and then the switch I just put it on the gear switch right right up here where my finger is 
Um, so all this auxiliary or this channel five is is the uh, self level feature. So if you don't want self level on, you uh, make sure to be able to assign this to a switch, um, and so you can turn it on and off. And that's all there is to it. Um, nothing else I'm using yet. I should put um, some expos and things like that in here. Let's get out of here first. Um, but I haven't I haven't done any any of the expos and things like that. So that's probably my next thing to do. But overall, it flies super stable, as you can see. Um, it's just hanging out in the the small space I have right now inside, and it seems to fly great. So uh, my next step is definitely. Um, put some camera gear on this thing and see if I can do some FPV videos. That would be pretty fun. So, uh, If you have any questions, hit me up and I'll try to answer them. Again, go to rcexplorer.se and uh, check out his build videos. No, not build videos, but his uh, build logs and, and things like that. That's exactly all I did to, to get this guy set up. So, Alright guys, have fun.